Even if you don't watch the news, have you heard about what's been going on with the Menendez brothers? Well, for those of you who grew up in the 80s and 90s, then you've lived through the Menendez trials. For those of you who didn't, then I'm sure you've seen the Netflix show Monsters. And there's a lot going on with the Menendez brothers. Let me give you a criminal defense attorney's perspective on what's going on. Hi, I'm Daniel M. Rosenberg. I'm criminal defense attorney and the founding partner of Rosenberg Perry and Associates. And I remember the Menendez brothers. I remember the trials. I remember the hung jury. I remember the conviction. And now there's a lot going on with the Menendez brothers and their potential release. Well, before we talk about their potential release, let's go over what happened with the Menendez brothers. And that is, in 1989, the Menendez parents were brutally murdered in their homes while watching television. They died from multiple shotgun wounds. And the two sons, Eric and Lyle, were charged and ultimately convicted of their murders. Now, originally what happened is the Menendez brothers called the police and said, hey, we got home from the movies and we found our parents like this. And several weeks went by where the Menendez brothers weren't charged. Then they started doing some further investigations, saw the boys were spending lavish amounts of money on Rolexes and expensive cars. And they started taking a closer look and ultimately charged the two boys who went on trial. During their first trial, they made the claims that they were sexually abused by their father for many, many years. And as a result, they killed their parents, but it wasn't necessarily in self-defense. It was an imperfect self-defense. What that means is that a reasonable person wouldn't believe that they needed to use deadly force, but that they genuinely believed that they needed to use deadly force. And so their claim wasn't, we didn't do it. Their claim was, we did it, but we were justified in some way. So the first jury came back as a hung jury, which means that they couldn't determine, make a determination unanimously. So as a result, they had another trial. In that second trial, the Menendez brothers were convicted. Well, something significant about the second trial is that the judge who sat and oversaw the first trial did not allow any of the allegations of sexual abuse to be permitted into the second trial. So when none of that evidence came in, they were ultimately convicted and they received life in prison without the possibility of parole. Well, that was over 30 years ago. So what's going on now? Well, in May of 2023, the Menendez brothers' attorneys filed a motion to have their convictions vacated. And the motion included additional evidence. And one of the pieces of evidence was a letter written by Eric Menendez to his cousin eight months in advance of the murder saying, hey, essentially I'm being abused by my father and I don't know how to get out from under it. So that's evidence that could have been used at trial that they thought should have been presented and they should have been allowed to argue. And the other piece of evidence had to do with an individual from the band Menundo who was underage at the time and claims that he went to Jose Menendez's house and was raped at his house while Jose Menendez was an executive at RCA. So both those pieces of evidence corroborate that the boys were being sexually abused and therefore that evidence should have been presented. So the defense attorneys for the Menendez brothers are saying, hey, these convictions should be vacated. So what's going on with the case? Well, what's going on is the Los Angeles County District Attorney George Gascon has made a petition to the court, not that the Menendez brothers' convictions be vacated, but that they be resentenced, and that they be resentenced not to life in prison without the possibility of parole, but that they be resentenced to 50 years to life. Now, the Menendez brothers have served approximately 35 years. So what does this petition mean? Because they were under the age of 26 at the time, they are youthful offenders. And as a result, they become eligible for parole on a 50 to life sentence after 25 years. So that means that if this petition is accepted by the court, their sentence will be amended. They will then go in front of the parole board in California and they could legitimately par be paroled and be home almost immediately. So I've been asked a lot, what's going on and what do I think is gonna happen? Well, I think that they're gonna get paroled and uh, I think that this really has nothing to do with their case or the injustice of their case or the, um, uh, the lack of evidence or the evidence not being admitted. I think this very much has to do with the political climate that we're in. In 1989-90, the political climate at the time was no one really cared that these boys were alleged victims of sexual abuse. The tone at the time was these were spoiled brats who murdered their parents for the money. When the second trial came about, there was all this evidence of sexual abuse that was all suppressed and wasn't allowed in. The problem is these boys were legitimately abused and no one took that seriously. And 30 some years later, we look at it much differently. You've got the Menendez brothers who now have Netflix shows and documentaries that are bringing these issues to the forefront. You've got celebrities who are championing their cause. 
and you've got a district attorney who is up for re-election. And if you have any doubt that the fact that this district attorney is running for re-election will factor into the, to the decisions he's making about the Menendez brothers, then I want you to look into a gentleman by the name of Mike Nifong. Mike Nifong was the district attorney in the Duke Lacrosse rape charges. Mike Nifong, at the time that he was prosecuting the Duke Lacrosse players, was running for re-election. And what did the public want? The public wanted them prosecuted. And he pretty much put on blinders and proceeded to try to prosecute them to the point where he was disbarred and sent to jail. And that's because that was the public opinion at the time. He was running for re-election. That factors into your decision. Do I think that the evidence of abuse absolutely should have been admitted 30 some years ago? Yes. Do I think it's a travesty that the judge suppress all that evidence? Absolutely. That being said, what happened to the Menendez brothers happens all the time, every day, in courtrooms all across the country. And the motions to reopen and the applications that go in front of these judges that say, hey, look at all this evidence, these happen all the time. And they do not get the same response, they do not get the same outcome. They absolutely get this type of outcome when you've got the country looking at it. So at the end of the day, this is a hot button topic. Everyone's gonna have their um, opinions. This is my perspective. So if you or someone you know has been charged with a crime in New Jersey and has questions about what your rights are, the legal process, please contact our office. We'll take the time we need to assess your situation and give you blunt and candid advice. And if you like the contents of this video, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if there's a topic you'd like to learn more about, please contact our office or leave a comment below. I'd love to hear about it. We are criminal trial attorneys. We have your back. That's what we do.